Hey everybody, I'm going to be doing a pick a card reading. I'm going to shuffle the cards in front of you and let you choose from one of three decks. So just try to get into an intuitive headspace, um, you know, focus on the energy as you see me shuffling the cards and just, you know, you can, I'll, I'll lay them out for you so you have a minute or so to to look at the cards and choose the, the pile that feels right for you. So just try to get into that intuitive space now as I shuffle the cards. And it will be time stamped in the comment section below as well um, for those of you after you've chosen so you can skip to it. All right, so let's get into it. The question I'm going to be asking is so for pile one, Who is Mercury Retrograde bringing back into your life? What can we get on their personality, on this connection? What does that look like? So that's pile one. Let's get some clarifier cards here too. So for pile one, who is coming back around? Please clarify the other four cards. Okay. All right, so here we have pile one. Can you guys see that okay? I'll actually lay them out here. That's pile one. Pile two, who do we have coming back around for group number two? Those that are drawn to the second pile here, who do we have coming back around for you? Trying Mercury Retrograde. I'm gonna pull these cards for you guys. Eight cards for those. So numbers might be relevant too, that's seven and this is eight right here. Yeah, I think I will do it that way. I think I'll do seven, eight, nine. That way, if there's like a certain number that's in your head that will help you choose. All right, for group number three, for group number three, who do we have coming back around? Group number three. Nine cards from this one. Okay. So I want you to get into that intuitive space, like I said, and just take a look at these cards and Really get into that energy. Try to feel the energy behind each set. This is set one, set two, and set three right here. So try to get into that energy. If you want, maybe um, you could pause the video too and just you can use a pendulum or you can, um, for it takes some practice, but you can also use your body as a pendulum. This is an interesting trick that somebody taught me. And, but again, it can be, you know, same with the pendulum. It can be inaccurate just until you really learn it and you really get into that intuitive space. Um, it does take time to learn, so it's not like a sure bet. But, but you know, just with practice, you can definitely um, get to that point where it's pretty reliable. So you want to stand straight and put your hands on your stomach and just kind of relax and ground yourself and stay centered and then ask your question. And if your body falls back it's no if your body falls forward it's yes so that's one thing that you can do if you don't have a pendulum to to see which deck is right for you but but yeah if you want go ahead and, and pause the video too and just try to tune into the energy behind each deck and or behind each um pile here and see what's what you're drawn to all right Okay, 
pile one. Let's see. I don't know why I'm shuffling that. <laughs> okay, I did not mean to read. Did not mean to um, have those upside down. So I'm turning them right side up. I just have to. Yeah, there we go. So rigid, the warrior message. Dreamwalker, Sisters of the Seasons, the Cosmos, and Sundancer. Let me see where I can put this. So we have dreams, the collective good, illusions right here. We have cycles of growth, natural law, divine order. This is the cosmos is about creativity, and the Sundancer is joyful activity, celebration of life, and abundance. Sorry, let me see if you can see that clearly. There we go. And these readings are mostly going to be, for just for the for this particular video, it's going to be mostly um, personality. Because Mercury Retrograde does bring back a lot of exes, so I'm, I'm mostly tapping into personality traits. I mean, I might get a, a few details too on... What's, what the situation is exactly, but I'm mostly just seeing who's coming towards you. So for this group, it, it feels somebody that's very creative. I feel an artist. This could be a musician, or it could just be somebody who's very artistic and creative. I almost see like a tortured artist type. This person has a very creative mind. They're, they're a very out-of-the-box thinker. Um, they don't really do things the traditional way. I think this person also might be very damaged. I sense somebody who's very emotionally deep. I, I don't feel like this is, I don't feel like this is a very basic, this isn't your average person. This is somebody with a lot of creativity, a lot of emotional depth, um, probably maybe at war with themselves at times. They just, they're, there's somebody who feels alone in society, somebody who doesn't go with societal norms. This is somebody who's very passionate too. It could be a fire sign or just somebody that has fire sign a lot in their chart. Um, with rigid, the warrior and message. See, with rigid, I kind of I'm drawn to like look at it. Look at the crow. Look how it's looking. Pat, it's all it's just standing on the wall. It's kind of in limbo and it's like it's looking down at this light. And I feel like whoever this person is, you are basically their light. You were. You helped them out of this darkness. You um, were somebody who, who was a very a kindred spirit, basically. And they were they were afraid of letting go of this wall, though. I think that they had been hurt a lot in the past. I think just judging off the energy I feel from this reading, it's like the tortured artist type, you know? The, the, the musician or the artist that's just that's had a lot of pain and childhood trauma and... Um, you know, I, I keep hearing neglect and regret, and maybe he's maybe he's saying he regrets neglecting you. He regrets not being there for you more, um, or she. And I just I feel a lot of damage from them, just in general. I think that they've been rejected a lot too. I think that there's somebody who's very passionate and kind of needs things in their life to to. Um, to almost be dramatic and chaotic in a way. They like they need that passion. They need that muse. They get kind of bored if they don't have that, I think. They get they don't know how to do like a stable, normal relationship. They they almost cling I don't I don't want to say they cling to drama and chaos, but it's like they just they're so in tune with what they feel. They're, this is a very emotional person. Might be kind of guarded and scared and damaged, but they do have a really um, strong heart. This is a really emotionally deep person. And, you know, this could be somebody who's bipolar too because I do get the highs and lows, like the artistic highs and lows. It's like they're they're on this high and they're doing all their, their art projects and maybe music and um, whatever else. I don't know why I hear the circus for some of, for one of you. I don't know what that means, but but basically all the highs and lows. But then you know when the, that low comes, it's like they get into this depressed state, and it's hard for them to to really open up to anybody. They're they're in their head a lot, is what I get. Like this is somebody who can't just. 
So I'm, I'm, I'm describing personality because, you know, with Mercury retrograde, it's unpredictable who's coming back around. It's like, this is, this is the most likely person that's going to. This ex is the most like, or romantic connection, whatever it was, is the most likely one. This is the strongest energy I'm getting for this group of who's going to come back around. That's why I'm describing their personality so you can, you know, figure out who this is. But it's, it's somebody who can't, they can't really just, how do I explain it? It's like they're detached from society, but they're really hurt by everything that's going on in society. Like, they can't just, I don't want to say that they don't have a sense of humor, but they, they, they're a very deep thinker, you know? They, they overanalyze. They, they can't just look at society or look at the world and just take it at face value. They always want to know the hidden meaning of things. They always want to look deeper. You know, this is, again, the tortured artist, the tortured soul, a very deep person, a very intelligent person, very creative person that probably suffers from depression or bipolar um, energy. Um, you know, with, with, you know, typical artistic, li uh, artistic lows and highs, basically. I also want to say that, sorry, I got on a tangent there about their personality. Um, so looking at, okay, looking at this crow, you're their light. You see how the crow is looking at this light and this, there's this wall here. It was kind of like in the past, I think he was in, he or she was in limbo and kind of looking at you and, and seeing what you were about, maybe stalking you on social media a little bit. Um, they saw you as this light. They saw you as somebody who's like them and they feel alone a lot in the world. And so that was really nice to have that, that connection, that bond. It was like, that's very rare. And, but they were just kind of in limbo. They weren't willing to jump into that light yet. They were just kind of testing the waters and, and looking at that light, but they were afraid of it. They were afraid of, of more rejection, more damage, more loss, more heartbreak. You know, this person has been through a lot that has made them the intelligent, creative, just emotional, passionate person that they are. Um, they have a lot of life experience. I feel like this isn't somebody, this is not somebody who's inexperienced. This is somebody who's been through a lot in their life, definitely. Um, probably a lot of childhood trauma is what I get to. But it's like they weren't, they, they, they were too scared to dive into that light though. But with the warrior here, what we got, see, look at, look at, look how interesting that is that we have two crows here also. So the warrior, that's about this person coming forward, about being brave, about sending a message, even if they're afraid of rejection or afraid of loss, even if they're afraid of this connection and they're afraid of, of you know, just the, the possibility of going through more pain than what they've already been through their entire life. They're still getting into this warrior energy and coming forward, it looks like, with a message. I, feel, I think that's really interesting that we have the crow here looking down and then we have this crow flying it's like they get off this ledge and they dive into that light, your light, and they, they come forward with this message. Um, it's really, it's a beautiful reading, definitely. With the dream walker, you guys, I, cause this person would probably be psychic. I feel like your, your person is definitely psychic. That would make a lot of sense, seeing as the kind of life experience, like all the, the trauma and just probably abuse and neglect that they've been through in both their childhood and also relationships and friendships. Like, this would be, like, the nerdy, the nerdy, sweet, artistic type that, like, like, has a huge heart but is really terrified of letting people in because they've been abused and bullied and, and hurt so much in their life. Um, and with the Dreamwalker here, yeah, it makes sense that they're psychic, too. I think that they, they are very telepathic. They might not be in completely aware of it. They might not know what it is, but I do think you guys might show up in each other's dreams. Um, I think that they're growing too, psychically, telepathically. I think that they are in this cycle of growth, you know, the sister of seasons here. And they are getting to a point where they're just willing to be their, their unapologetic self. Like they're not worrying about what society thinks as much as they used to. They're trying to meditate more. They're trying to get into a more of an intuitive space. And I think that using their intuition is also helping them get in this warrior energy and come through with a message for you. You know, getting into that space where they're willing to be themselves, they're like, you know what, this is one of the few people that I don't feel alone around, and so I need to reach out to them. I need to say something. I need to, you know, I don't want to feel alone anymore. They're in a very vulnerable, emotional space. Um, take it kind of slow with them because I do sense that, like I said, they're very damaged. They've been through a lot in their life. They've been through a lot of pain, a lot of loss, heartbreak. So if, take it at this... Um, 
don't let them take it too slow. Like they should be consistent and they should be in your life, definitely. But if they start with a, hey, how, are you, how have you been doing? Don't overload them. Because there is the potential for this person to run. Because again, they're, they're very, they have a huge heart. And so they, they guard their heart. Even though they're really emotional, it's almost like they're really emotional um, through their artwork and through their music or through, you know, creative outlets, whatever their creative outlets may be. This person could be like um, gothic or it could be like, like have an alternative style, I would feel. I mean, not, not necessarily, but I, it would suit this personality type that they would have an alternative style because they just, they're very unique. They're very beautiful. They're very creative. So I don't see them like, I don't see them just dressing average because they're not average, you know, but some of them might, some of them might want to blend in, but they're maybe getting to a point where they, they are done blending in and they, they want to just be their true selves and they don't care what people think anymore. And they're just, they're so tired of. They're tired of their own insecurities and they're tired of overthinking. It's like this person has such intense and deep thoughts that they overwhelm themselves. Like they get lost in their head and they go back and forth in their head and overanalyze and they're exhausted with themselves and they're trying to get out of that energy and just live their life and just be their true selves and not care so much about, you know, the possibility of rejection when it comes to friends and lovers. Um... So, so the, in this energy, this creativity, it's really, it's really helping them stand on their own and realize how unique and, and wonderful they are. They're trying to work through their insecurities and have lived the kind of life that they want to live. And that's helping them get through to, into this warrior energy and come through with a message for you. But again, remember that they are afraid. They are this, somebody who's very damaged, and, and so it's almost like a stray dog coming up to you. If you move too fast, they're, they're going to run quickly the other direction, or they're going to bark, you know? So you, you, you kind of have to be gentle and then just take it slow. If, if you haven't talked to this person in a while, do not overload them when they come in. Sun dancers, joyful, yeah, joyful activity, celebration of life, abundance. This could be somebody from the fairy realm as well. Either you or them or both of you. Could be a, a fairy. Because they do have a fairy soul. So this would make sense. Uh, and, and, you know, celebration of life. Just living their life. And and just finally trying to get out of their head. And finally just enjoy their life. And, and you're a part of that. You're a part, a part of that enjoyment. They're, they're realizing that they, they can't guard their heart forever. They, they need these deep connections. They want, they might want to travel with you too, or go out and do like fun, creative things with you. I think they might have some plans for that. There's just certain things that they can say to you or certain things like your connection is just kind of different than what they have with other people. And so they really admire that and they want that back and they want that light back. And, and so they're trying to get into this warrior energy and come through with this message. All right, let's look at group two. All right, group two. Psychic battle, conscious, feminine energy, and chakras. Ooh, can we? Come on, come on. All right, I don't know. <laughs> Okay. Let me pull some clarifier cards, actually, because this one's a little bit confusing. I feel like this might be, for those of you that are in a third-party situation, I feel like my, my third-party reading that I just posted might be the same story here. I think that's for this group. That's what I'm feeling. So let's see. Can I get some clarity on what this is trying to tell me? So the Eight of Cups, the 
Fool and the Nine of Cups. Where can I put that? I'll show it to you guys and I'll have to put it down because I don't know where else to put it. <laughs> Eight of Cups, the Fool, the Nine of Cups. Let's see. Look at that. I feel like this is somebody who's very kind and mature and logical. I think they're trying to be a better person than they were. For those of you that are in a third party situation, I feel like it's like the karmic kind of tempted him here. And he realizes that he was a fool. I'm, I'm being led to just, you know, intuitively read these. He realizes that he was a fool for falling for that. And now he's kind of looking away. He's kind of seeing the karmic as this frog that he doesn't want anymore. He's looking forward. Um, so this energy is very seductive, too. If you look at both women, the eight and nine of cups, it's like they're, even the fool, actually, is pretty, in this deck, it's pretty seductive. For others of you, like, if you're not in a third-party situation, then I think this is saying... That one of you, whether it was you or him, one of you is kind of is kind of a seductress here. Whether they see you, either they see you as a seductress or this person is really seductive and kind of they're charming. I wouldn't say they're like manipulative necessarily in a bad way, but it's like they kind of play hard. They play head games sometimes, but like they mean well. They just I don't know, they just play I I feel playing hard to get. So one of one or both of you is playing hard to get. Or you were in the past. With the Eight of Cups, it's almost like somebody was wanting to start a new life. It's like the Eight of Cups, it's like run away with me energy. And I keep hearing the song um, Echo by Trapped, which is the, you know, the lyrics to that song. It's all about running away with somebody. It's about like starting a new life with somebody. And the Fool is, that's the first card in the Major Arcana. That's, that's all about, this is creativity. This is, this is a new start, you know, these are both new starts. This is like running away with somebody to start a new life. Um, and it's like they want this new start with you and they're trying to seduce you into kind of like running away with them. But they want to be chased. That's the problem. It's almost like, okay, so either you want to be chased and they don't get it like you're trying to play hard to get and they don't understand that you're playing hard to get like they're not they're not good at reading the signs and so th maybe this could be your energy where it's like you're trying to play hard play hard to get and like they're not really doing much because they don't understand that you're playing hard to get they're insecure and they're just feeling like you just like they don't know that you're that into them for others they're the ones playing hard to get and it's like they want you or them it's like you want this new you want them to you want to be all seductive and you want them to chase you or they want or they want you to chase them however that play however that you know plays out for you and it's like they want someone wants this new start but then someone is kind of playing hard to get here like look at the nine of cups it's like they're they're there's a lot of pride here it's like they're trying to they're just playing these games it's like their heart is there like they want the new start they want the love but they want to like make you work for it or you want to make them work for it. And this miscommunication is leading to you guys like not realizing that you're on the same page actually. You both want this love, but somebody's playing games and not being clear about it. You know, whether that's you or them, it's just there's, there's this miscommunication, I feel. You know, it's interesting that we have psych we have, you know, a psychic battle here. It's like victory after struggle. It's, you know, the fight isn't quite over, but you're close to it. And you have the Nine of Cups, which is also like one, you know, the next would be Ten of Cups, which is completion, like having the love life that you want, having this, you know. So I, I, I sense the communication issues here. I think that pride is the issue with this person. Um, I think that they're too logical about things, too. Like they kind of think about things and they're just... They're almost more traditional or they're just, they're very, they're very stuck in their ways. Like they have a, a, an idea of how the world is and they just, they kind of just stick to that. Like, yeah, that's, that's just how the world is. That's just how things are. Um, and I think that's kind of why they play games too, because they don't really understand that there could be people out there that, you know, don't like that or people that don't just want what they can't have. And so there's this kind of power struggle here and this stubbornness, and I think that they are becoming conscious 
of this connection. This would be like more of like the science type of person, I think. Uh, somebody who's, that's not, that came out weird. I don't know why that came out so weird. Um, somebody who might like question psychic ability and that kind of thing. Somebody who's more um, fact-based, you know, not really so much with emotion. They're more about the facts, I feel. They might be trying to get out of that though, because I do feel like they're a kind person. I do feel like they have a good heart for the most part, but they just, um, they, they need to get out of their, their per perception of, of thinking that they just know how things are and they know how the world is and, and they're a little too rigid at times. It's, it's like they're conscious and they're, um, you know, this could be intentional telepathy. This could be like intentionally psychically communicating, but it's, it's also just conscious actions and efforts. Um, you know, it's, it says, you know, the person in question is fully awake and aware. So I do think that they're aware of this connection and I feel like they're, they, they want to come back around, but it's almost like they're coming back around with this kind of energy, with this, um, logical kind of swords, harsh energy where they still haven't completely learned how to let their guard down and let you in and, and have an emotional conversation. So they're coming back a bit too logical. For those of you that are in a karmic situation, I do think that the, the um, karmic might be causing chakra blocks for the masculine. See, I do feel, I feel a lot of love from this masculine though. Like even though he's, how do I explain that? Even though he's logical, it's like he does have deeper emotions that he just hides from, from everybody. And I do sense this deep longing. It's like he's blocking himself. Like there's, I sense blocks between you guys. It's almost like he just doesn't know how to just get out of his own head and just be vulnerable. It's like the, it's like the tough guy act basically is kind of, it's, it's like he's logical and he has this whole like tough guy act almost. He either, so he either hides behind logic or humor. Like I, th I think it could be somebody who's like a, like into like a, I don't know, maybe like a science major or just somebody who hides behind or like business major or something. But they hide they hide behind logic. Like they kind of just have this idea of how the world is and how things work and how they have to survive in the world. Like it's a kill or be killed world kind of thing, and they're just kind of. At some point, they just kind of stopped trusting their emotions. They just stopped letting people in, and they just put their guard up, and they didn't really t ever take their guard down. Um, so this is somebody who might have a big heart, but it's like they've kind of just given in to like their logical side. Like their logical and emotional side is out of balance. They... Um, Maybe they got screwed over, and after that heartbreak, they were just like, you know what? I gave this everything. Screw it. I'm never gonna give everyone every. I'm never gonna give anyone everything again. You know, this is a killer kill be. This is a killer be killed world. I'm, I'm gonna protect myself. I'm gonna be logical. I'm not gonna get attached first. I'm never gonna say I love you first. Um, I'm gonna play hard to get. I'm gonna play mind games. I'm gonna make sure I always have the upper hand. I'm not going to let myself be in a situation where I get heartbroken again. It's kind of their mentality that they've been in. So I think they're becoming conscious that this is a deep connection between you guys. But when they come back around, they might still be guarded. Oh, and sorry, what I was saying is, so this could be a science, like somebody who's just very logical and very, um, uh, how do I explain that? Like just uh, head over heart basically but it could also be somebody not for all of you but for some of you it could be um somebody who's kind of a tough guy somebody who tries to present this image like they're a badass and they're you know like they might hide behind humor or they might just hide behind this tough exterior where they're just they think they're they try to present this image like they're a badass and they never fall in love and they screw people over but people don't screw them over and they're um, you know, nobody can manipulate them. They're, they're all powerful, <laughs> like that kind of energy. Um, so for some of you, it could be like the, the basic tough guy routine that your, your person pulls, um, this person that wants to come back around to you. So it, it does seem like they're conscious of this connection. They're becoming more aware of it. But again, if they do come back around during Mercury retrograde, I see it being kind of, I don't see them being mean to you. I just still see, see, see that stubbornness where it's like they might ask you how you're doing, but I don't know if they're going to um, 
pour their emotion out just yet. But I do feel the emotion there. So this is what I do want to say is I do. And again, if this is somebody that you've been dealing with shit for, with for a while, just let them go. It's not worth it if they're going to keep doing this. Um, you know, make that call for yourself because just because they're coming back around doesn't mean that you have to go for it again. You know, it might not be something that you want. But I, I do sense the love there. I do sense this connection there. But it's just like they're they're so unwilling to be vulnerable and let anybody see that. And that's the problem is it's like, are they really ever going to let you fully in? Are they going to are they going to be willing to be vulnerable? Are they going to be willing to drop the logic in the tough guy act in the, you know, whatever else if this is somebody if you told them that they're your twin flame or soulmate and they were like they brush it off it's like kind of like they're just again just a defense mechanism with them where they're trying to be logical about everything and not be emotional but they're so out of balance like they need to be emotional sometimes they need to have a logic emotion balance and they don't at all <laughs> with the angel with the eagle king here it's you know looking at the big picture so i think that they they try to they try to stay detached and they try to look at the big picture a lot and not get caught up in their emotions like they used to, um, but they're doing it too much almost. And angelic help it could also be that their angels are trying to help them get in tune with their emotions again and trying to get them back to this more open space because they're just very stagnant. They're very guarded. And you know, like I said, just it's gonna each situation will be different. But really, really think and decide if this is worth it to you. Because for some of you, this person might not ever really let anybody in again. You know, they might just be too damaged. But for others of you, they will let you in again. But you kind of have to go off your situation and really use your intuition and think, is this still worth it? If you've been doing this for years and years and they're coming back around again, but they're still not willing to let you in, I would, I would give them a chance to let you in. But if they're not, if they come back around and they're still defensive with you, and they're still, like, ghosting you or not letting their feelings be shown, I would probably give it up. Um, I do feel like these people have, I do feel deep feelings from this person, though. I really do. It's, it's kind of like when they're by themselves or, like, at night, it's like they miss, it's like they're struggling with themselves. They're, they're at war inside themselves. Like, they have a lot of pain and a lot of damage that they just, they feel like they have to handle everything alone. They feel like they're they're they feel alone. They feel like they're they have to handle every harsh hard thing that they go through on their own. Um, they feel like they have to be strong all the time. They have to be they have to present this tough guy act to the world. This is somebody that cares a lot about what people think, definitely. And they um you know, I feel like, I just feel like they're so trapped in their head. They're so trapped by themselves. They're so at war with themselves. They're so, so afraid of being vulnerable. They're so afraid of showing emotion. They're so, maybe somebody humiliated in, in the past. That could be, that could be like an ex. Maybe they, they had like a more romantic side in the past and their ex humiliated them and like degraded them and like turned that against them. Because I feel like this person like is a romantic deep, deep down but I feel like they're so afraid to be a romantic now. So it's like maybe somebody who really humiliated them in the past or like told them that they were a pussy there or they were too soft for being that romantic or they said some harsh things to them that made them just like afraid to ever show them like to ever feel that kind of rejection again. They're, they're just afraid to ever show that side of themselves again. Because I do, I feel like this like deep, I feel like this like just this regret and this chaotic energy like inside like just such a strong internal struggle that they're dealing with that they've been dealing with for years probably um between their heart and their mind and it's like they're they're so out of balance they're just so it's like I see them thinking about you that's the thing is like I see them like crying over you almost but they won't ever show you or anybody that it's like it's like when they're alone in bed or they're like they're somewhere isolated um, it's like they cry over you or they miss you or they like they think about like they have these like regrets when it comes to you like they wish they had told you how they felt or they wish you know they just have all these regrets and like all this guilt too I feel a lot of guilt from them and they're in so much pain but I feel like their pain either comes out they, they either suppress their pain completely or if it does come out I feel like it mostly comes out as anger but it's like this would be like somebody who like sees you on social media and like 
wishes you would reach out but they won't reach out first you know and that they need to reach out first like they're the one that kind of messed up thing messed up from what i can get from this so they need to reach out first they need to apologize they need to come forward and it's like they're just they just play hard to get and they just hope that you'll do it they just hope that um but they can have their cake and get too i guess it's almost like it's such interesting energy though because it's like i see them breaking down over you like i see them really emotional about you I, like, I, like I said, I see them because I'm trying to, I know I keep repeating that, but I'm trying to tune into that energy and see what I can get from it because I'm like, there's something to that. It's like, maybe there is intentional telepathic communication between you guys. I don't know because it, it doesn't strike me as like, this person is so logical and guarded, they almost don't strike me as a, the kind of person that would be in tune with their intuition, but maybe, I don't know. I'm, I'm struggling with this one. This person is very... It took me a little bit to even look at these cards and read this person because this person is so guarded that it's like it, it took me a bit to really tune into their energy because they're so stubborn and defensive. I almost feel like they're playing hard to get with you and it's not working and they're getting frustrated because they're like, you know, this person does not want to show their feelings. Even though they have these deep feelings for you and they have this longing and regret. And it's stupid because I see them crying over you. Like, I see them realizing that they messed up. Like, I see them getting really emotional and just, like, feeling this pain over you. But then, like, that's not, they don't show you any of that, you know? And it's like they're, it's almost like they're still playing hard to get. <laughs> but you're not really chasing them anymore. And so it's like if they want you, they have to come get you. They have to be, they have to come talk to you. You know, you're not going to chase them anymore. You're tired of that. You're, you, you're tired of doing that. You're tired of trying to get them to open their hearts. You're tired of trying to convince them that this is real love, that this is true love, you know? And it's really sad because this person does realize, as stubborn as they are, they do realize this is true love. Like, they do realize that this is, that you're their person. I really feel like they do realize that. I feel like they're they're conscious of that they're they're completely aware of that i think um but again just the struggle is just so unwilling to be vulnerable and so unwilling to let their guard down and risk getting hurt again and it's sad because it's like there's not really a risk of getting hurt you know like you're their true love like you would support them you would be there for them this is probably this could be somebody you, you've been on and off with for years or somebody that you've been so I feel like you've been their rock in the past, whether you realize it or not. Like, you you have been their rock. Um, it's This is a tricky one. I wish I could give you guys more clarity, but it's really tricky because I think for some of you, your person is really close to breaking down. Like, they're tired of fighting this connection. They are really sad and upset over it. They're tired of not letting be, not being able to let people in. It's like they're blocked. Like, they're blocked inside. This person could have um, entities on them. Two, this person could have entities that need to be removed. That's possible for some of them because I think that there's like, there's something in them that's like blocking them and they're not themselves. Like they're not, for some of, for some it's entities, it really is. I hate to say it, but it is and that need to be removed. For some it's like a combination or for some it's just all the shit that they've been through and they just got to that point where they were humiliated and hurt so much that they just decided I'm never going to love anyone like that again ever and they just shut their heart down. For some of you, and again, it's, it's I hate, I, you have to use your own intuition because this connection is really tricky. If this is toxic, you know, if this is somebody that's never going to let you in, then I would let it go if you can. But uh, for some of you, I feel like your masculine or your feminine is in so much pain that maybe they will break down. Maybe if you're really gentle with them, you know, try to just communicate and say, hey, I don't like the games. I'm not going to play. The I care about you, but I'm not going to play the mind games with you. I'm not going to do that. you you got to decide if you want to let your pride go or not. You know, you got to decide if I'm important to you, if you want me in your life. You do have to be, all of you, I feel, have to be assertive and set boundaries with this person because they will play the head games and they will hold on to their pride and be stubborn if you don't. So you do have to be assertive, but you got to find a way to be assertive and also gentle with this person. Like, you know, we can take things slow, um, just slowly kind of breaking those walls down. Like we can take things slow. We don't have to jump into anything. We can just communicate. We can work through things. We can talk. We can learn to communicate with each other better. Um, 
just as long as you're making an effort as long as I mean as long as they're making an effort even if it's kind of messy as long as they're actually trying and they're communicating with you you know as long as they're making some effort to be part of your life and not just shutting you out like if they ghost you again I would let them go that time if they if they try that again with you so yes, I do feel them wanting to come back around, but again, I think that they're going to come back around in more like a logical way. It's like they're not going to pour their heart out. They're going to just kind of test the waters and make sure they're going to make sure above all else that they don't get rejected or hurt ever again. So they're going to be really test the waters. They're going to say something probably light so that if you say, you know, fuck off, I'm done, they can fall back and just be like, oh, I just wanted to see how you were or whatever. You know what I mean? Like they're not going to say anything right away that could get them rejected. But for some of you over time, if you're willing to work through this, then, you know, they are in a lot of pain and they do really love you and they do realize they messed up. So if your masculine is willing to work through it and actually be in your life and be consistent with you and, you know, communicate, even if it's hard, just, you know, with this, this willingness to maybe not, they're not going to share all their feelings. Like they're not, not at first, at least. But if they at least are willing and they're, you see physical proof that they're doing the work and they're trying to communicate better and they're trying to be um, a better person, that they're trying to really let you in even though they're scared, like that's, that's what you've got to look for. You know, is it worth it? But if this was abusive, then let it go. Like if they physically abused you, don't give them another chance. For those of you that this is physically abusive, don't, don't give them another chance. Definitely not. Definitely not. Um, there's just so many blocks with this person that need to be removed. And with feminine energy here and chakras, I feel like either a past or current karmic situation with a woman blocked their chakras or messed their chakras up. Because it was like I was talking about earlier in this spread where it's, um, there's just so much fear and there's so much like just this somebody who really humiliated them. So they're really guarded because of that. So that really they need to do some chakra clearing work and, and maybe ha they might have under or overactive chakras too that they need to address and do consistent um, uncrossing and chakra work to clear those things up and, and maybe cut ties with this karmic because that's still affecting them. That's still a big that still plays a big role into their unwillingness to let anybody in. See, I think that they used to be a much more generous person in the past, the lady of the gift here. I think they used to be much more generous, and they got taken advantage of, and so they're kind of in this mentality now where they they would, it's, they have this kill or be killed mentality that they need to get out of. Um, I think their angels and their guides are helping them get through that too. Let's see. This could be a twin flame connection because I say the Lady of the Mirror and it's like, you know, a mirror would be a twin flame connection for some of you. I think the masculine is also going, or, or your feminine, whoever it works out, they're, they're kind of like reflecting on things that they've said and done in the past. They have a lot of regrets and they're, they're realizing that they were wrong about some things, I think. They're trying to get into this non-judgmental place. I feel like they... They need love and compassion. They also see you as somebody who's loving and compassionate. And again, I think this is somebody who used to be really generous and used to be really loving and used to be a more open person in the past. But they just, they got to a point where they just decided never again. And they just kind of stayed with that for the past few years or longer. Um, so again, you know, situation to situation, decide if this is really worth it to you or not. If there is hope, they, they need, they have to come forward. It's really difficult too, because this, this person is so stubborn that like, they're still waiting for you to make the first move, but they're the ones that messed up. They're the ones that need to make the first move and at least say, hi, how are you doing? Just say something, just say anything. Um, Cause if they've been stubborn and they hurt you in the past, it's like you, you know, you have, you, you get hurt too. Like you're, you're going to be too afraid to message them because you don't want to get rejected. You don't want to deal with them being stubborn and, and being guarded with you for no reason when you haven't done anything wrong. It's almost like they just see everyone as somebody that could potentially hurt, break their heart completely. Like they don't really 
see people on an individual case-by-case basis, you know what I mean? Like, they don't really get to know people individually. They just see, they kind of just lump everyone together and see everyone as somebody that could really screw them over because they're just, um, it's just like, it's, it's like a defense mechanism. It's like, it's just easier to understand the world when you just label and group things and just say, yeah, everyone could hurt me instead of really realizing each person is different. The story is going to be different with each person, you know? It's, it's not that simple. People are complex and diverse, and you can't just group and label them like that. So, so yeah, that's, that's, that's what I got for this group. And again, you know, like I said, it's going to be whether you want to give it another chance or not is up to you. I think they, they do have deep love for you, so it just depends on if they're really willing to, um, to communicate and to just try to open up to you about, about what's going on with them and about you know, even if it's slow opening up, at least if they're making an effort more than they have in the past, that's a good start. But again, some of you want to let this go and others, you know, others, there is some hope here, but, but this person is very stubborn. So, you know, keep that in mind, just kind of take it, kind of just match their energy and see what they do, you know, be gentle, but be assertive too, so that you're not getting used and hurt. Um, all right, and this, if this reading resonated with you, please go ahead and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. All right, I'm going to do pile three. Okay, pile three, let's see what's going on. Temperance, two of pentacles, justice. All right, interesting. It's pretty good. The page of cups, all right. Four of wands. Let's see. So there is a very strong emphasis on balance here. So your person, I feel, did not have balance in the past. I, this could be a, like work and love. Like they just weren't able to balance the two and they were too busy for you. And then we have justice coming in. So it's like they're finally making time for you. Maybe they got laid off work or they got the promotion they've been working for or they, they got to that next step. And so they have more time for love. And so that justice is coming in and they're wanting to communicate now. Um, could have been like an all work, no play situation. There could have also been some com miscommunication, uh, not miscommunication, but well, maybe miscommunication, some kind of confusion in your connection, like some answers that they didn't have that they now have, like could be t people trying to turn you against each other. Um, or just some type of imbalance. See, because Temperance and Two of Pentacles, those are two very similar cards that point to this need for balance, this need to juggle duties, whether it's it's work and home life or work and love or whatever. This you know this could also be other people's opinions. It's like they didn't know who to listen to, who to trust, and now there's justice coming in. So whatever it is, whatever the situation is, whether they just were working too much and not giving you enough attention, or there was like maybe between you and a karmic and they were, tr they wanted to have their cake and eat it too and juggle both of you. Um, or there was just family or friends or somebody keeping you apart and they just didn't know how to have this balance. It's basically whatever it is, it's like there was just this lack of balance 
in your connection where it's like they wanted to give more time and energy and effort to you, but they weren't able to because of work, because of family, because of friends, because of a karmic, whatever the situation might be. There was just some some type of third party energy there that um, was kind of confusing them and manipulating them and making it hard for them to devote as much time and, and energy and love to you as they wanted to. And with justice coming in, though, we have this person is finally receiving some clarity. This person is kind of starting to finally realize the nature of this connection. And things are finally starting to balance out for them and for this connection. And I feel like they're kind of, maybe they've just, maybe it is work or just some situation where they've just been running on empty, where they've just had to, there's some type of distraction, something that was distracting them from you. And that's that whatever that was, it's, it seems like it's being removed now with the page of cups and the four of wands. I see a lot of sexual energy here too, where they might be thinking about you in that way quite a bit. Um, because look at how, look at the page of cups look at right after the justice card the fourth card the page of cups this seductive mermaid it's like they're wanting maybe they've been working too much and they just got laid off or they just got promoted and so they can relax a bit or just some or some type of project that they were working on or whatever it might be um and their life is just a little bit less busy and a little bit less hectic now or it's about to be at least and with the page of cups it's like they want to have fun again they want to get back in touch with their inner child they want to let let go and just go out and and have fun again this could have to do with the quarantine too maybe being quarantined for so long they they might be some of them might be considering going out to bars or clubs or whatever um because they just want to let loose they want to have fun right now they want their life to be fun again their life has been very stressful and they're they're finally starting to come out of that stress and come out of that busyness and, and so they want to make time for play again. And there is the part of that play is, is sexual energy. I do I do get that with the Page of Cups looking at that seductive mermaid. It's like he wants to take you out and flirt with you and maybe like tease each other. And um, he might be fantasizing about you in lingerie or she might be fantasizing about you, you know, naked or whatever, however that works. Or it could be male, male, female, female, however it plays out for you. Don't get too caught up on gender. It's it's. It's however, whatever your story is, I know however it resonates, but, but there is this very sexy, seductive, um, playful kind of girl. I don't know why I want to say girl next door. Cause it's like almost like that. Well, yeah, yeah. I guess it would be kind of girl next door. Like, cause it's like teasing. It's like he wants, he or she wants to be teased by you and they fantasize about that. Um, Like, they really like having to work for it when it comes to, like, sexuality. It's like they like, they're not like the hit it and quit it type. I don't feel that energy from them. I feel like they're more like they want to see you in lingerie and they want to take it slow and they want, um, they want to be teased. Like, they want to, they want to beg for it, basically. Um, and in the Page of Cups, is it's, it's about imagination and creativity. It's about romantic feelings, too. So it's like, again, just getting back in that that free-spirited side of themselves, that, that fun side of themselves, like finally having a balance and finally making time for the things that they love and the things that are important to them and finally just being able to rest, maybe going and getting a massage or just doing something healing that's good for them and not just work, work, work. Um, could be, for those, for some, it could be getting out of a karmic situation too where it's like the relationship was just all work and all stress and all you know, trying to make things work when they were both unhappy and they could be coming out of that and going through this phase where they just want to go out and have fun and live their life and they don't want to be, um, they want that justice, you know what I mean? Like they want to be free of that kind of tied down toxic energy that they had with the karmic. With the four of wands, I think that they're, they're thinking about you. I think that they are thinking about how it was with you or how it could be with you, you know, because the four of wands is is again talking about good times and you know peace and happiness and celebrating and just being in a good environment and i kind of always see it as nostalgia too 
Like this, I mean, this is like party energy, but it's not really like in a, in a toxic way. It's more like they just need to let off some steam. It's like life has been so hard and so stressful and lonely and difficult. It's like they just want to like go out and like have fun and, and live their life and maybe travel or like go to clubs or, or do whatever they do, you know, like they just they want to have some fun. Finally, they want they don't want their life to just be all stress and all work. Um, and we, you know, with the four of wands, I always see that as. It's, it's about happy times. It's about peaceful times. It's about what they're wanting. I always see it as nostalgia, too, because, like, if you look at the Four of Wands here, it's the fifth card. You see how this character is is dreaming. Like, they're looking for their... Here, let me, let me pull it up here. Like, this is your person kind of just dreaming about you, um, kind of in this this emotional, I don't know how emotional it is. It's like, it's fun. It's kind of emotional too. How do I explain that energy? Just gotta look at it and tune in. <laughs> I think they're like, they're watching you on social media and more kind of noticing you more. Cause I think maybe before they were so busy with work or with the karmic or with whatever it was that they were busy with. And then with justice and the page of cups and the four of wands here, coming in, it seems like they're kind of getting out of that energy with whatever that third party situation was, like that's being removed. And now they're having more time to focus on on having fun and focus on you and focus on just living their life in general. This person could be a workaholic. I do get workaholic energy. Could be an earth sign. So yeah, with the hawk prints here, it's spirit communication. So maybe listening to their guides more like they're because they're able to get into more intuitive space. But also just paying attention to you more, just focusing on you more. I think this person can be overly hard on themselves. I'm getting this energy with, see, we have, we have the high lord of gratitude and service. So this is somebody who's very generous, but almost to a fault, almost like they put other people, I feel like this person is kind of insecure. So it's almost like they, they put other people above themselves, like they put the needs of the community or the needs of, um, this could be a protester too. This could be somebody that's been working hard to, to make change happen politically also. That would make sense. This, um, see the high Lord of gratitude and service. So this is selflessness. This is humility. This is conscious action, but this is somebody who's almost, it's like they try to be selfless, but sometimes they sacrifice too much of themselves to other people or other situations. You know, sometimes they don't hold on to themselves quite as much as they maybe should. Um, it's almost like they don't feel like they deserve good things because I'm reading it that way because I'm looking at, at these two cards right here. The prison waif, which is self-sabotage and poverty consciousness, and then the desert prince, which is survival and false promises so i think you know i do think this person has the tendency to maybe self-sabotage if something good comes along it's like they don't feel like they deserve it they're a hard worker they feel like life has to be a struggle like they have to just survive like any promise that's made to them might not be real they can't rely on themselves they can't rely on that they can only rely on themselves so i think this is for somebody who's pretty independent they they try to they're overly hard on themselves and they try to just rely on themselves and they try to just survive and do the best they can to be a good influence on the world but it's kind of like they self-sabotage you know it's like you know with this this first card we have here it's, it's poverty consciousness it's it's like they're in survival mode like if something good comes along they just they they doubt it they question it they wonder if it's it's if it's really for them if it's really right for them if they could really have something that good they seem to have this mentality where they also think that life has to be a struggle that they have to fight that life has to be rough that life can't be good and fun and easy and so um you know, or that's that's the, the mentality that they've been in, but what they're finally finding a balance with the justice card here and these other, the um, page of cups and the four of wands coming in, they're finally having a balance and starting to let loose and starting to allow themselves to just have fun and then go out and live their lives. So, and you're a part of that too. They want to have fun with you and there is a lot of sexual energy um, going on right now with this connection. They are thinking about you, definitely. So if this resonates, please go ahead and subscribe.
Thank you guys for watching.